We are looking at the addition reaction called hydrohalogenation. This is when we add a molecule of HX, HCl, HBr, or HI, to an alkene. This converts the alkene to an alkane. We add both the hydrogen and the halogen to the carbon-carbon double bond. In this reaction, there are three different variables that we need to consider while we are predicting the products of this reaction. The first variable that we need to consider is regiochemistry, which is looking specifically at which of the alkene carbons will get the hydrogen and which one will get the halogen. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. To help us accurately predict the regiochemistry of the hydrohalogenation reaction, we're going to use a concept or principle called Markovnikov's rule. And to illustrate Markovnikov's rule, I am going to do an example of an alkene addition using this alkene right here. It's a pretty simple alkene. We have three methyl groups on the carbon-carbon double bond and one hydrogen. And we're going to react this alkene with a molecule of HBr. So again, what we're looking at in this, in this video is when we put the hydrogen onto this alkene, will the hydrogen go to our left carbon or will it go to the right carbon? Just referring to left side, right side of the double bond. So regardless of where the hydrogen goes, the first step of the reaction mechanism is the electrons from the double bond reaching out and grabbing the hydrogen of the HBr molecule, which causes the HBr bond to break. So notice this curved arrow is starting at the double bond. It's not starting at a carbon. It doesn't matter which carbon is going to end up getting this hydrogen. The actual curved arrows are always coming from the double bond, not from any particular carbon. But the electrons that are reaching out and grabbing that hydrogen are going to be used to form a bond between this hydrogen and either this carbon of the alkene or this carbon of the alkene. Let's draw both possible options. So let's first draw the, the intermediate that we would get if the hydrogen from HBr bonded to this carbon right here. So remember that we are converting our double bond to a single bond, and I'm just going to take this methyl group and just kind of bend it out of the way a little bit to make room for that hydrogen that we've added. The other carbon of the alkene ends up with a positive formal charge because for now it is deficient in terms of bonds. It only has three bonds. So here is option number one. Uh, for the hydrogen from HBr adding to the left-hand carbon. The other possibility is that these electrons are used to form a bond between the HBr hydrogen and this carbon right here. So let's draw that, that possibility. That will look like this. Again, I just took this methyl and just kind of pushed it down out of the way to make room for this hydrogen. And don't forget the positive formal charge on our other carbon. So these are the two possible intermediates that could be formed in this first step. How do we decide which one is correct? Well, to make this decision, we're going to be using what we know already about the stability of carbocations. We know that the more carbon-carbon bonds you have on a C+, the more stable that C+, is. So this carbocation right here has one, two bonds to carbons, which makes it a secondary carbocation. This one has one, two, three bonds to carbon, which makes it a tertiary carbocation. And we know that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations. Because they are more stable, and we can think about this in terms of energy, if we want to make an energy diagram, because the tertiary carbocations are more stable, it actually takes less energy to form them. They are just lower on the energy diagram, something like that versus something like this. This would be our tertiary. This would be our secondary. So because this is an easier intermediate to form, it is going to always be formed in favor of our higher energy intermediate. So what we can do with this guy is just kind of cross it out. 
and say that this is not formed because it takes too much energy to form that secondary carbocation. We'll just say, to keep our wording simple, this is not formed because it is less stable. And of course, our reactions are always trying to, to form the most stable possible intermediate. So this is the intermediate that is formed exclusively. And once that intermediate is formed, it can react with the bromide ion that was lost over here in the first step. And the bromide ion will attach itself to the positively charged carbon. And that leaves us with this molecule right here. So what we just observed is called Markovnikov's rule. And in, um, in words, rather than in diagrams, we can summarize Markovnikov's rule by saying that the hydrogen of HX will go to the carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond with the most hydrogens that are already present. Now, I know that that sounds really confusing. Um, it's just one of those things that, that sounds very confusing. But when we look back at this example here and kind of break this down, you'll see that it's actually not as confusing as it looks. The hydrogen of the HX goes to the carbon of the double bond with the most hydrogens already present. So let's apply that to this up here. Of our two carbons, this carbon, the first carbon right there, has, oops, this has zero hydrogens attached. We're looking at hydrogens that are attached directly to this carbon. This carbon right here has one hydrogen. So this guy has one hydrogen. This carbon has more hydrogens than this one. And that tells us that the hydrogen of HBr is going to go ahead and add itself to this particular carbon. So look, the hydrogen with one, the carbon with one hydrogen, the most hydrogen gets the new one. So HBr's hydrogen goes here, which is exactly what we observe when we form the most stable carbocation. Now there is one kind of exception to Markovnikov's rule. And it's something that we're going to we're going to look at in this chapter, but we're not going to really have an opportunity to understand why this happens until a few chapters down the road. So let's say, for example, that we have this molecule right here, and we want to not draw the mechanism, but just predict the product of this reaction. So what is made from this? Well, we know that when we are doing an addition reaction, we are turning that carbon-carbon double bond to a single bond, and we're going to be adding something to each one of the carbons of the double bond. To help us understand what gets added where, let's go ahead and think about what we already have on each carbon. So this carbon has how many hydrogens on this carbon? This carbon has zero hydrogens. This carbon has two hydrogens, which tells us that the new hydrogen is going to be added here added to the carbon that already has the most hydrogens present. So that means we know that our new hydrogen from HBr will go here and the bromine from HBr will go here. We'll practice this quite a bit more. So here is the molecule that is made. Um, one exception, as we said, is if this reaction is done in the presence of a peroxide so maybe you have peroxide as a solvent, or maybe you just have some peroxide in the reaction mixture. When we have peroxides present, we actually get the opposite of what we would expect. So instead of having the new hydrogen add itself where we would expect it to be, it adds itself to the wrong carbon, if you want to think about it like that. 
peroxides are molecules that have oxygen-oxygen single bonds. So H2O2 is one example. We can also sometimes see R groups on our peroxides, one R group or two R, two R groups. When we have peroxides present and we do this uh, hydrohalogenation reaction, we refer to this as anti-Markovnikov addition because it is not following Markovnikov's rule. And again, this only happens when you have a peroxide present. And like I said, we're not going to be able to really understand why peroxides make the reaction violate Markovnikov's rule. We're, we won't be able to, uh, to understand that until we get a few chapters further down in the material. It will make sense eventually. But for now, you just sort of have to accept it as a thing that happens. If a peroxide is present, you're going to get anti-Markovnikov addition. With no peroxides, you'll get Markovnikov addition. And just to make sure it's very clear, with anti-Markovnikov addition, it does not have to be HBr. It could be HCl or it could also be HI.